today, um, today, because we're going to be in plank pose, you've got to take extra special care with your wrists. Okay, so I know that that some people would be going, oh no, Ruth, yeah, I can see you nodding at me. Okay. So just remember the alternatives are to be, these. I call these tripod fingers, so where you've got your fingers like that on the floor. So that's your first alternative, I like that. Or you could put your knuckles down instead of your palms. But I'll talk to you about this while we're flat at the screen. So what I want you to always remember is that there's a horseshoe like that on your hand. Okay, and that's where your body weight should be going into, primarily across here, across the top of the horseshoe. So here, where the wrist joint, the centre of the joint is, there sh you should try avoid putting your body weight fully there, or any body, it should always be here. Okay, so, and, and then also, do you remember in the last few weeks, we've been talking about externally rotating the upper arm bones out. And so when we do that, you can probably see when we externally rotate the arm, notice what happens to the hand, it, it wants to the fingers turn down. But I don't want you to do that. I want your arm to externally rotate, but your hand to stay upright. Okay, so it's probably let me just take my jumper off. So if you practice that, uh, sorry, oh, I've been hot all day and then cold and now I'm, <laughs> all right, so, so I want you to, if you hold out your arm in front of you and spin your upper arm bone as though you're wringing it out as, and your fingers turn back down. So you've got your inner crease of your elbow facing the ceiling, and then I want that to stay the same. So put your hand here and hold this. Don't let this upper part of your arm move, but now spin your lower arm so your fingers point up. And that's always what you're looking for, this external rotation of the arm. I'm a bit bendy in my elbows, so don't take any notice of how my elbow is bending, but I do want you to externally rotate your upper arm bones because that will work a muscle here. Um, the serratus muscle, which is very good at, I hope that I've got the name of that right, but it stabilizes the shoulder blade um, because you want your shoulder blades to stay on the back of your body. So people, when you see people that are very loose in their shoulder blades and their shoulder blades are pinging off of the back of the body, that's because of a lack of stability in the shoulders. And that's no good. You don't want you don't want that pinging, that winging of your shoulder blades. It's okay when your hands are behind your back because that's you've got this massive um, internal rotation of the arms going on, which is not a very natural position for the hand, for the arms to be in and the shoulders. But we do it a bit in yoga, so it's nice to understand that that's happening. But primarily, yoga is about pushing, okay? We push a lot, we push in down dog, we push in, you know, plank pose, we push in all of these poses with our hands. And it makes the front of our body very strong, but the back of our body is weak as a result. And that's why you should try to do other things as well as yoga, okay? Because <coughs> yoga is fabulous for the push, but there's no pull, there's none of this action, which, which makes you use your back, okay? And so therefore, to try to find some stability for the shoulders, this is why this is this external rotation of the upper arm bones helps to pin the shoulder blades onto the back of the body. And underneath your shoulder blades, you have a very lovely muscle that holds the shoulder blade onto the rib cage and it's helping to engage that and make it happen. okay? So there you go, a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of body work going on. So back to your hand, horseshoe shape, and then fade the thumb and the index finger side of your hand, so that when you're pushing and you're externally rotating the upper arm bone, but then keeping that there as the thumb and as the fingers rotate back to their normal position, you want to be putting more of your body weight here into not only the top of the palm, but also the thumb and index finger side of it too. So you're really working the inner part of the arm. And what happens when you do that, you get more range, you get more, more length. And that's what this class is all about, is how can you use the ground to lift yourself away from it? Okay? 
so sorry <laughs> so that's turned into a little bit of a kind of workshop on all of these things but you'll get the idea in a minute for the time being um, come and have a lie down <laughs> and we'll percolate that that information I'm going to put you on to mute everybody welcome to everybody who's just come on board lovely to see you um, I hope you got the gist of that from halfway through the conversation right so I'm just going to put you on to mute and going to change this all around <laughs> good okay so i'm going to move that down a little bit see you all over there okay my darlings so have a little lie down and maybe lay in constructive rest pose that's the knees bent feet what as wide as the mat uh, the toes slightly turned in and the hands resting on the tummy somewhere in between the maybe the navel and the hip bones okay and we'll think about letting the back of the body sink into the floor And we'll take the time to breathe now and to connect into the breath as you breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. Maybe finding a natural Ujjayi breath. where you feel that the breath is moving down the back of the throat and is slightly more audible than perhaps is normal. As you breathe in, encourage the belly to relax. And as you breathe out, encourage a natural contraction to the tummy. And this is where our practice of yoga begins, with the breath. There's so much benefit to be had from a simple breathing practice. So which can be incorporated into the asana practice as we do, or it can be practiced standalone. I really encourage you to take some time out of your day, maybe tomorrow, where you either come into this pose, constructive rest, or you sit, or even you just go and stand out in the garden. And breathe. Do this for two minutes and notice the difference that it makes. And because it will feel so delicious to the body and the mind, you'll want to do it again. And so you factor in some more time to do it maybe later. And because it's delicious doing it a couple of times a day, you make the time a bit longer. And this is how we begin to take our yoga practice 
one little step out of the room you're in or off of the mat you're on. So it becomes a part of your everyday. You've all been doing so brilliantly, regularly coming to practice and establishing this routine in your own home. Maybe it's time to explore a few extra things that you could do. Your yoga becomes an integral part of your life. begin to move a little bit now. So let's think about taking the hands down by your sides and heel toeing the feet back in line with the hips. If you've got something underneath your head, slide it out away from you. And then on your next inhalation, breathe the arms up and over your head. So the back of the hands touch the floor behind you, if they can, don't force them down if they don't reach. As you exhale, the arms come back up and over your head and you turn the palms midway so the backs of the hands touch your, down by your side. Keep going with this, breathing in and the arms coming up and over. And perhaps you've got your eyes closed and you're really focused on this breath led practice. And how welcome these movements feel within your body. Never forcing the body to move in any way it doesn't want to go. Keep breathing, keep moving. On your next exhalation, I'd like you to hug in your right knee towards you. Give it a little squeeze in. Then return the foot and sweep the arms up and over your head as you breathe in. Then as you breathe out, squeeze the other knee in. Keep going, slow breaths. Use Ujjayi breath if you're familiar with it. If you're not sure what it is, um, if you haven't come across it yet, just send me a message, drop me an email. I'll point you in the right direction. Breathe in. As long as your breath is slow and steady, you're in no rush and you're not forcing the breath and you're doing everything right. After your next inhalation, the arms have come up and over, scoop both knees in towards your chest and pause there, giving yourself a little bit of a squeeze in. Again, Relax shoulders, there shouldn't be any force here, no strain. Just see where your body naturally wants to move to. And then maybe take a little rock across the back body, making sure the nose is rocking with the knees. As you find a little bit of massage, loosening and freeing up across your back. Lovely. And then Come back to the center and replace the feet back to their really wide apart position. Take the arms into cactus arms, just gently. If that's not comfortable, return the arms down by your sides or any other position. Inhale with the knees in the center and then exhale, let the knees float to one side and turn your head away from the direction of your knee. Then inhale, bring the knees and the nose up towards the center and exhale the knees out to the other side. All right, so keep going, breathing the knees up to the middle and breathing out, knees out to the side. And go super slow with this. Keep the breath moving in and out of your body in a very gentle, very soothing way. And there's that sense that nothing else matters right here, right now, apart from this.
One more on each side, everybody. Good job. And then come back to the centre. Carefully roll yourself over to one side and lift yourself up to an all fours position, please. Okay, so place your hands underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers, but not super wide apart. Just make sure there's plenty of mat in between each finger. Find your horseshoe shape to your palm and make that your focus of attention for the next few moments. And see if you can simply take your shoulders a little bit further forwards so that you can feel your body weight going into the top of the palm and then come back. And this I know isn't everybody's cup of tea, so please don't do this if this is going to aggravate your wrists. Okay, instead you could be on your knuckles, and instead what you can do is concentrate on drawing your navel in and making your torso super strong. Still with the rocking, it doesn't matter whether you're on fingertips or knuckles, okay? All right, everybody. And then we're going to do um, a little, some circles now. So just floating the shoulders in circular movements and then changing the direction and going the other way. Good job. And then you can come back to the center and sit back onto your heels. Lean forwards just a little bit so you can bring the backs of your hands or the back right up to the wrist joint and onto the floor and then let your chin fall towards your chest. Slightly draw the navel in. Keep letting the chin fall towards the chest. Feel that there's a lovely stretch sense along the back of the neck and across the back of the shoulders. And you're not too heavy into the hands. There's no real body weight there. Just the, the, the weight of the arms, maybe. Okay. So take an inhalation. Come up to an all fours position. And just do fingertips on the floor. Step your right foot forwards. Little rocks. So take care of the back knee. If you need to put something underneath it, you can do. We're not doing anything with the hands here, it's just with the legs. We're opening up into the hips, so a little rock forwards and backwards. Good job. And then coming back, this time we're going to walk the hands back with us a little bit. Lift up the toes and give the back of the leg a little bit of a stretch. Okay, so it should hopefully feel a stretch all the way from the Achilles up the back of the calf through the back of the hamstrings. Very nice. Now float forwards again. Leave your left fingertips or knuckles on the floor. Make sure that your right knee is above your right ankle and then turn to the right. You can put your hand onto your thigh here. You could put your right hand onto the back of your sacrum. You could turn your head and look up. All right, so think about now pressing into the floor through your fingertips, keeping that stability there, externally rotating the upper arm bones, but still keep pressing into the thumb and the index fingertip. Good. And then gently come back to the center. Replace the foot, sorry, replace the hand back down to the floor. Walk the hands back, lift the toes again, exactly the same position, so preparation for half splits. And again, left fingertips, like a tripod, stay on the floor. And I want you to turn again to the right. Now you should feel a nice big stretch down your outer thigh, Janet. I hope this is um, in, the region, in the right region. And if you want, this time, take your right hand up to the ceiling and you can look up towards your right thumb. Very good. Take another breath here. 
and then gently come back down. Very nice. Bend the right knee, slide the foot back to meet the left, and then take the left foot forwards. Again, just your fingertips on the floor, so no palms down yet, and you're rocking forwards and backwards a couple of times. Okay, next time you come back, let the toes lift off the floor, keep the heel on the ground, try and keep the pelvis fairly level, and then think about taking the right, sorry, the left sit bone towards the top of your mat. And you might find that that gives you a bigger stretch down the back of the left leg. Good job. One more breath here. And then walk the hands forwards and bend the left knee. Leave the right fingertips onto the floor and you're turning to look to the left. And it could be your left hand stays on your thigh or the left hand goes onto the back body. And you're thinking about spinning around, spinning the rib cage around, maybe a little bit of drawing in of the navel that might get you a little bit more rotation or a little bit more stability. Good job. Come back to the center and then walk the hands back so that the left leg straightens, heel on the floor, toes are high, right fingertips stay on the floor and then turning again to the left and then lifting, if you can, the left hand up to the sky. If it's too strong, just keep the hand on the hip or the back of the body. As you reach up towards the ceiling, can you keep pressing into the right, into the fingertips on the right hand? And think about, as you press down, can you find a little bit more lift and a little bit more space in your body? Is there lightness? That's what we're always looking for, lightness within the strength. And then looking down, lower the left hand, good job, and sweep the left foot back. This time, palms are down on the floor. We're going to come into downward dog. So tuck the toes under, lift the knees, unravel the backs of the legs, let the head fall between the arms. Maybe a little bit of a pedal of the heels, and I want you to enjoy how that feels in your calf muscles. Um, especially after those lovely big back of the leg stretches. And then if you think about spreading out the balls of your feet, a little bit of a bend to the knee, just lift the tailbone up to the sky, press into the thumb and index finger side of your palm, externally rotate the upper arm bone, chin towards the chest, heels back, Breathe here, draw the navel in a little bit. Take a couple more breaths if you can. All right. And then we're going to look towards the fit fingers and walk the feet forwards towards your hands. Well done. And allow your knees to bend enough so that your tummy can rest onto the top of the thighs. The arms can dangle down. And again, if you're able to, bend the knees enough so the backs of the hands are resting on the floor. The chin falls towards the chest. The head hangs heavily down. I'm going to stay here. Or you can move with me. You're going to gently breathe in and lift the sit bones opening up the backs of the legs if you can and then exhaling letting the knees bend and you come down into your sort of semi squat position and then we'll do it a couple more times so breathing in lifting up the sit bones straightening up the back of the legs and then exhaling re-bending the knees one more time breathing in good and out and then this time, let's walk the hands up the front of the legs and let's relieve our bodies by coming up to stand and maybe just noticing how that's feeling along the back of the legs and um, into the, maybe around the sit bones, that sort of thing. Sorry, I've got half of my hair in my mouth. Okay, so we're going to stand at the top of the mat and I'd like you to stand in mountain pose. So spread out the balls of your feet, drag the heels back. And so we've thought a little bit about the hands because that's going to be so important for a plank pose. 
but we also have to think about now the feet. So I want you to spread out the balls of the feet so that you can press into the four corners. Okay, you're all familiar with this now. So press down and think about as you press down, can you create lift, upwards movement of energy, particularly ground down into the big toe and inside edge of your foot so that you can lift the inner arches of your feet and feel that there is a line of energy going all the way up the inside of your thigh, making that lovely lifted feel that then will run up the centre of your body and all the way out through the top of your head. As you stand here, press, pressing down into the soles of your feet, but lifting the inner arches and then lift, that lift continues. Can you lengthen your tailbone towards your heels? Can you lift the front of the hip bones up slightly? Keep the low ribs in. Relax the shoulders, turn the palms forward slightly. And lift up through the back of your brain. Relax your face. Relax your jaw bones. So we call this energy at the feet, the Padabandha. And it's, it's really important to recognize and to cultivate this upward lift so that all of the poses become lighter and look more uh, easeful, okay, more graceful, like they're a sort of floating poetry to them. In, an, in, a, in my lovely, idealistic, beautiful world that I live in. <laughs> okay, so now what you're going to do is bring your hands together in front of your body, in front of your heart. And I'd like you to press really firmly into the palms. Okay, heel of the hands together, top of the horseshoe together, fingertips together. So it's all, they're all working. Now this is a good indication of carpal tunnel because if after doing this with your hands for about 30 seconds, it starts to ache, that can be a sign that your, your, any discomfort in your wrist could be linked to that. Okay? Not that I want to put words or, or things or, or conditions or anything, but I know some of you have talked to me about this before. Okay. Now there's a really nice one that we can do to counter this which is then to turn the palms inside out. The prayer is back to front and you could have your hands, put your fingers pointing down and that's quite nice. You can also do it with your fingers pointing up, okay? So some people's wrists will be very happy with doing this and some others won't. Just move in a way that feels right for you, okay? But all of these are, so release and give your wrists a bit of a shake. All of these are really nice ways to just tone and lightly lubricate the wrists, okay? As is this one, which we do fairly regularly in class. If you link your fingers together, elbow joints together, and then roll your wrists in a circle. This is, I, you know, we teach this one we do it on a Thursday morning, sometimes on a Saturday morning. It's great for, for morning practices, just getting the joints uh, nice and lubricated. Okay, stop and change direction. So you don't have to go quick, you can go slow to do this. Lovely. And then release and swing it out. Okay, so all of this is nice preparation because we're going to come into our first plank poses. I'm just doing high plank, Falakasana. Um, straight arm plank basically okay so hands together we're going to work towards it through our sun salute now hands together at your heart just pause for a minute and then on your next inhalation take the hands up towards the ceiling and look up towards your thumbs as you breathe out bend the knees and fold down over the front legs and let the hands release to the floor Lift up the sit bones, bring the chin towards the chest. 
Okay, now you can leave your fingertips on the floor, bend your knees and step your body, your legs back into plank. This is Falakasana. So we're going to pause here. Remember, you can be on your fingertips or knuckles, or if it's too strong, you can bring your knees to the floor. Now notice that my back body is in a fairly straight line. So try to avoid your hips being higher than your shoulders and encourage your shoulders over your wrists, body weight towards the top of the palms. Think about pressing into the thumb joint, but externally rotating the upper arm bone. This will help you to lift the back of the heart slightly. Tailbone towards the heels, draw the navel in towards the spine, and you should be feeling like you're working here, okay? There should be effort. Don't want to see any saggy bottoms, so no one doing this, okay? So keep a little bit of lift to the front hips, tailbone pointing towards the heels. Well done. Last breath. <laughs> and knees down. Good job. Untuck your toes, take your bottom backwards towards your heels, Turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Drop the head in between the arms. Relax the upper body, relax the shoulders. Good. So you've tackled your first plank for tonight's practice. Nice and straightforward, okay? It's a fabulous pose for building strength and stamina. So if you felt a bit shaky or a bit wobbly in it, don't worry but repeat practice, regular practice, and building up the breath count while you're there will all help immensely. But don't worry, we're not gonna be doing loads of them. We are gonna be doing some variations um, of them in a minute. All right, so turn your palms back down and float yourself up to an all fours position. Good job. Think about the thumb, uh, sorry, the, the body weight pressing into the horseshoe of your palm, externally rotating the upper arm bends, but you don't have to overdo this. Then tuck the toes under, inhale, lift the tailbone, let the navel drop and look out in front of you. And keeping the arms in the same position, then untuck the toes and as you exhale, round into a cat. Okay, breathing in, tuck toes under into cow. And as you breathe out, keep externally rotating the upper arm bones and notice whether that changes any sensation across the back of your shoulders. One more time, breathing in and breathing out. Good. And then coming back to the centre. All right. Take your body weight off of your wrists again. Bring your hands down by your side. Turn the palms up, bring the back of the hands onto the floor, round through the front body, draw the navel in, drop the chin towards the chest, okay? And get this lovely center of your body drawn in as though you're lengthening the back of the body into a cat pose, albeit you're kneeling, okay? Take another breath here. Good job. And then gently release. Good. Okay. Well done, everybody. So we're going to move into practicing or working towards a little bit of um, a side plank. And I want you to watch for a moment, okay? Because there are a couple of way, a couple of options for how you practice this. So an ordinary plank is with the body on all fours like this, as we've just done. A side plank is going to look a bit like this. Option one, the feet roll to the sides and you can have one foot on the floor in front of the other. So that's option one. We're gonna practice this together in a minute. Option two is to stack the feet, okay? So one foot rests on the other. And option three is to take the top leg slightly in front, okay? And this is probably the easiest variation and will be nice for the final variation that we'll work towards in a moment, okay? So come everybody, come on to all fours 
remember that if this gets too much, you can do this with your forearms on the floor, okay? It becomes a little bit trickier um, in terms of your balance and lifting your body weight, but it's no bad thing, okay? You're not going to do yourself a disservice by not being on your hands. All right. So if you can come into a plank, as you did before, and you're going to just first of all have your feet hip width apart and simply rock the toes to one side, so one foot is in front of the other on the mat, then come back to the centre and rock the heels out to the other side. So this is quite nice in and of itself because it's great for the waist. So do this a couple of times so you get used to the foot position. Good job. And come down onto your knees and sit back for a moment. Okay, give the wrist a little bit of a shake. All right. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of um, a wrist dance now. So you don't have to wet, drop any body weight. You can just lean forwards from this kneeling position. You're going to place the palms down, fingers forwards. Turn the palms up, fingers forwards. Turn the palms down, fingers point out to the sides of the mat. Turn the palms up, fingers point in towards each other. Turn the palms down, fingers point towards the knees. No big pressure into the wrist here. So we'll do that again. I'll then lift the hands off of the floor to rest. So palms down, fingers forwards. Palms up, fingers forwards. Palms down, fingers out. Palms up, fingers in. Palms down, fingers back. Good. And then rolling back off of the wrist. Good. Give them a little bit of a shake. And just something like that, Not you're not weight bearing, but just little movements like that are really great for the mobility of the wrists. And, and those of you that have practiced with me for so long now, you'll know all of the wrist stuff that goes on for me. And so I've, I, I, am, I suffer from carpal tunnel and from ganglions, all sorts of things, but it's, it's constant attention and not overdoing it, of course, but weight bearing as is appropriate and lots of mobility practice, okay? And, and stability from the shoulders as well. So I'm not dropping all my body weight into my hands as much as possible. And they're all of the things that we look to cultivate because really we wanna be using our torso, our core, to hold us rather than it's collapsing down into the wrists. So with that in mind, come back onto all fours. Tuck the toes, find your steady Balakasana. And then we're coming into Vastasasana. So turn the toes to one side. Either have one foot in front of the other, one foot on top of the other, or one foot in front, in the middle of the mat roughly. Your choice. And then you can lift up onto the fingertips and gently bring your arm up to the ceiling or onto the side of your body. Now I really want you to squeeze the bottom hip, to draw your core in, to take your body weight to the top of your palm, to keep the inner thighs firm, the feet look like you're standing on the floor, can you find lightness? And then gently come back down, turn the toes, knees down, take a rest in child's pose. All right, my loves, another breath. Okay, lengthen the fingertips forwards. Float up to all fours. We're going to come straight onto the other side. So we're not wait, uh, resting on the same hand for too long. So turn the toes. Do the same leg position as you did on the first side. Lift the bottom hip. Externally rotate the, the arm bone. Lift the top arm up, 
If you can look up towards your thumb, go for it. Remember the, the way you turn your gaze affects your balance. Keep the bottom hip strong, side body working strong, inner thighs strong. Cultivate that lifted feel. <laughs> Good. And then gently lower down and bring the knees down, rest back into child's pose. Okay. So do you remember, all right? We're gonna do that pose one more time later. Okay, we're gonna do some other stuff now. Um, but do you remember to, to substitute by coming onto a different hand position or onto your forearms if you, if you need to. Let's do our little wrist dance again. Palms down, fingers forwards. Palms up, fingers forwards. Palms down, fingertips out. Palms up, fingers in. Palms down, fingers back. Then roll off of the heel of the hands and bring the hands back into the lap. Good job. Okay, come back onto all fours, tuck your toes and find yourself into Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then walk your feet towards your hands and slowly curl your way up to stand. Good job. Nicely done. So when you're here, back to hands at your heart, close your eyes and feel the steadiness of your feet against the floor. And enjoy the gentle beat of your heart behind your hands. All right, release the hands down by your sides. Good job. You might want a brick. Um, we're going to work towards a side angle pose. So I'd like you to take the brick towards the right. Uh, uh, if you're turning out to the side, have it towards the right foot end of your mat. Okay, we're working to warrior two, first of all, then into a side plank. So let's start by stepping the feet a good distance apart. That's it. Turn your right toes to point to the top of your mat and turn your left toes in. I want you to feel like you're pressing into the outside edge of your back foot and that you can lift the inner arch of the back foot. Then press into the big toe joint of the front foot and lift that arch too. Keep lifting that arch as you bend the right knee. Try not to lean forwards. Keep your torso upright, tailbone pointing down. Externally rotate the thighs this time. Arms can come up to shoulder height and look down your right fingertips into the distance. Front body open, tailbone pointing down, low ribs in a little bit rather than letting them uh, jut out. And breathe. It's lovely, everyone. Okay, last breath here. And then lower the hands onto the waist. This is where you might need your brick. You might not need it at all. We're going to take the side bend again. Okay, so we've done a little bit of side body work so far. Keep the right knee bent and take your right forearm onto your thigh with your palm up. Cartwheel your left arm alongside your ear and look to make a lovely long straight line with your body. If your body feels like you've turned your heart towards the floor, your job is to revolve the body so that the heart faces out to the side. And in fact, you want to be thinking about your rib cage turning as though you're trying to turn all the way to face the ceiling. Of course, that's not going to happen. But it just keeps the focus on this being a side body activity. If you want, you can look towards your left thumb. And if you want to lower your right hand onto the brick or onto the floor, please do. Okay, keep breathing. One or two more breaths here. Feel free to come out sooner if you wish. Looking good, everyone. Well done. Last breath. 
and then we will transition back into a um, warrior two. So take a breath in, float up, good job. Hands onto the hips, exhale, straighten the right leg, turn toes forwards. If you use the brick and you want to use it at the other end, take it with you now. Come back to a standing position. Turn the left toes out. Turn the right toes in slightly. Lift the inner arches of both feet, really anchor down through the big toe joint. This is going to create that lovely length up the inner thigh. And as you externally rotate your thighs, you're going to be using your glutes more. So bend the left knee, travel the knee in, in the direction of your middle toes. Press the outside edge of your foot firmly into the floor behind you. Externally rotate the upper arm bones, feel yourself squeeze. In fact, put your hands on your own bottom. Okay, why not? Give your bottom a little bit of love. You don't have to, obviously, but just every now and then. <laughs> okay, but I want you to feel that those muscles there are working because we shouldn't be sitting on them all day long. Okay, that's not what they were designed for. They're designed for running and walking and climbing, and we need to do more to, to strengthen them. So arms up, make sure those glutes are nice and firm. <laughs> okay, tailbone points down slightly. Think about your big toe joints, press them into the floor. Can you feel that line of energy up the inner thighs? Lovely. Now straight into side angle. Forearm onto the thigh, right arm alongside the ear, and actively reach into the fingertips. Create lots of length along the side body now. Breathe, look towards your thumb if you want to. If your balance is a bit off tonight, feel a bit wobbly, just have your gaze out to the side. Same if you have high blood pressure. If you want to drop your left hand onto the floor or onto your brick, please do. Good, last breath, doing brilliantly. And then we'll look down. We'll take an inhale to warrior two and exhale to straighten the leg. Lower the hands, turn the toes forwards, step one foot to the middle of your mat, step the other foot in to meet it, return back to mountain pose and breathe. Okay, two more standing poses that I'd like to do. Triangle poses first. Step your feet into a distance a little bit shorter than for your, uh, perhaps for your um, warrior position. It's the triangle pose, feet should be roughly a metre apart. Turn the right toes out, turn the left toes in. Legs stay straight this time, it's another side body movement, but more into the inner thigh, so you want you to feel that there. Don't lose the glute on the back body though, okay, so keep squeezing the glute as well. And then the right hand can come down onto a brick or onto your shin. Left hand up, look up towards your thumb. Unless, of course, you have high low blood pressure, you could look down instead. Good. Breathe in. And breathe out. Another couple of breaths. Good job. Let's look down. Take an inhalation, float up and leave the arms. Turn the toes so you're pointing out towards the other end of your mat. Reach forwards, feel the stretch on the inner uh, left thigh. Left hand down, right hand goes high. Side body movement here. Press into the big toe joints of both feet. Lift the arches of both feet. See if you can find that lightness. Sometimes it feels easier, maybe because the legs are both straight, I don't know. But there's a sense that you can really sparkle up towards the sky through your fingertips. Good. Another lovely breath. Then look down, take an inhale, return back to uh, shoulder height with the arms, hands to hips, Turn the toes in and step the feet back to the middle and mountain pose. Okay. 
We're going to cultivate some of this sense of lift and lightness by coming into a balance. Um, we're going to work, it's like the start of eagle pose. I'll do it both ways around. So you're going to make this shape. Yeah, you can see that okay, can't you? So I've simply chosen one leg, don't mind which one it is, but make sure you've started by spreading out the, the ball of the foot and dragging the heel back. And then notice that I keep my ankle at a right angle and I put that leg, whoops, she says, <laughs> onto the top of my thigh. And I want you to bend the knee just a little bit. Bring the hands together in front of the heart. And the idea here is that you stop, even though you've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a drop in the hips, a little bit of a squat going on, there's still lightness within your body. So you've got the lightness because that's what we need, that upward flying energy so that we can soar light through the currents, um, just like a bird. All right. See if you can come down a little bit lower. Those of you that have got your balance, maybe you can find your elbows to reach your lower leg. Okay, all the time feeling like you're lifting lightly as though there's helium balloons underneath you. Lovely. And then gently come up and release and shake it out of your standing leg. Good job. And let's do the other side. So spread out the ball of the foot, drag the heel back. Just take extra good care if you're on carpet. I should have said that earlier. Maybe be near a wall if you feel a little bit wobbly, um, just because the carpet doesn't afford you such a solid surface to balance on. All right, so you've got to create that sense of moving down into the earth so that then you can lift away from it. Okay, you've got your padabanda going on through the foot. Keep the um, floating leg, the ankle at a right angle, cross the knee or cross the lower leg over, take a little bit of a squat, hands at the heart if you can. And you're, even though you're pressing down and there's strength around the hips and the leg, there's a lightness within all of that lovely strength and energy that's coming from the legs. Good. If you can come lower down and maybe find the elbows towards the foot and the knee, go for it. It makes you concentrate, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. On an inhale, gently lift yourself up. Give the legs a little bit of a shake. Okay. So we have prepped ourselves beautifully. I want you to come back down onto, uh, just into a seated position maybe so that, or any, any it depends where you are, where, where you can see your device, um, so that you can see for a moment, okay? So we're coming back now. We've talked about the feet, the padabanda. We've talked about the hands, and this is the hastabanda, okay? So we're talking about, banda means, means upward lift or upward lock. Um, so that we can create, as we create connection with the earth, we can use the earth's energy to move us away from it. And this is what it's going to look like. And you can do this on your forearms um, and you can modify it. You can do any of the poses that we have already done, any of the variations that we've already done instead of this. You're going to come into your plank. You're going to turn to one side. You're going to bring your foot forwards. And it could be that you come into this position, or it could be that you hold on to your big toe joint with your two piece fingers, okay? And you find your balance to start to lift your leg. And maybe you just lift it a little bit. Maybe you lift it out to the side, or maybe it comes all of the way up towards the ceiling and you keep pressing into your hastabanda. You've got all that lovely energy. And then when you're ready, you bring it back down and you step back to plank and you come into child's pose to rest. Okay, so you can see. So <laughs> okay, we can do this. You can do this. Remember, substitute by being on your forearm. It's harder. In fact, actually, if you're on your forearm, it's sometimes it's harder to come into the pose 
because you've got to lift up, but it's easier to start off with. So you, if you're thinking my wrists aren't up to it, there's no reason not to try this, okay? And maybe you're in the pose that looks like this. <laughs> and if you can keep that lovely inner thigh energy working, foot flexed at the bottom, ankle flexed, ankle flexed at the top, and then lifting up, even if you just lift off the floor a little bit, you're into your side plank. Well done, Judy, that looks amazing. <laughs> Good work, everyone. Joe, that looks lovely. Madeline, oh my God, you look amazing. <laughs> well done, everybody. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, <laughs> there's this loveliness, isn't there? There's this lovely side body reach. It's good, keep trying, you've got this. <laughs> Lovely stuff, well done Victoria, that looks great. Carla, that looks good as well, well done. Johnny, you are right. <laughs> okay, all right, now come down, take a rest, have a little bit of a uh, maybe a little dance, maybe the rolls of the wrist or the, the hand dance on the floor if you want to, whatever works for you. Okay, so like anything, we always have to do the other side and I want you to think about all the things that we've been piecing together and it's like, it's like all these different pieces of a puzzle, which don't always happen in one class, but build up slowly and over time. And you start to see the, the development of your practice because you can take from other elements, other poses or other classes that we've worked on. And you're looking at so much here. You've got your stability because you're using your arms, you're using your upper body strength, which is great for... Uh, bone density and keeping muscles nice and strong. Um, you've also got a lot happening in your core. So if you felt a bit weak or a bit wobbly, that's the area you've got to focus on now. Think about the external rotation to the upper arm bones to keep the shoulder blade on the back of your body. And then think about your inner thighs so that you can get that lifted light feeling. All right, so I'll talk you through that all again. Come over onto your all fours position or choose your forearms on the floor if you want. You can start by staying on your side and doing it that way. Roll your feet to one side and then maybe bring the foot halfway along the floor um, so that you can reach for your toe. Okay, externally rotate the upper arm bone. Make sure that the hand's not too close to the knee, okay, or close to the body. You want it out longer, if anything. And then think about engaging your core, making your inner thigh firm, lifting up the bottom hip and working towards having a straight leg. See if you can find it, if you can hold it, keep all those things happening. Don't worry if you're a bit wobbly. <laughs> Beautiful. This is gonna, you're all gonna get nice. It's that mugginess as well, isn't there? So it's a bit of a sticky one. All right, come down and take a pause for a moment. Good. Let's give your hands a little bit. Maybe this time, if you bring the heel of your hands together, I'm just putting them here so you can kind of see. It's, it's sometimes a bit difficult, isn't it, to see from that far away. If you bring the heel of your hands together and then roll them, keeping the wrist touching all of the time. And that's another one of my kind of go-to wrist movements. Go the other way now for a couple of turns. And have a rest. I want you to think about, if you are a, a wrist sufferer, maybe take notice, please, if you're, how your wrists are feeling tomorrow. And let me know whether they, sometimes they can feel really good um, after, after practice, like especially with plenty of wrist care in between. Can you sit with your legs out to the side? I'm going to take a little bit of a twist now as we start to cool and unwind the body down. 
you're going to turn away from the feet. Those that, um, uh, that wish to, you are either going to take your, the back of your hand to this outer thigh, but if you want to, you could tuck your hand underneath the knee and see that I've got my palm, I hope you can see that all right, so I put my palm on the floor. It means you lean forwards a little bit more. We practiced this last week, I believe. The other hand can come behind, and you're looking over the shoulder, remembering the opposite direction to that the feet are going in. Yeah. Good. Gently return back to the center. I'm going to do the same pose. We're going to take this, this what I call my front knee, and you're going to put, keep the ankle fairly comfortable, but just rest the foot onto the top of the thigh if you can. If you can't, it just rests on the floor in front of the knee. Okay? So don't force the hips. We're still keeping the legs on the same side. We haven't come around to the other side. But you're just seeing if you can put the outer edge of your foot into or as close towards your hip crease as possible. If you've got any sensation within your knee, especially on the inner knee, then don't do this. Okay, just let it rest on the floor. Now, if you can keep your foot there, you might be able to take your arm around the back of your body, so your hand is behind your waist, and you may be able to hold on to your foot. She says maybe, <laughs> and John did ask me if he needed a strap tonight, and if you wanted to use a strap, you could do to reach the, the to bridge the gap. But if not, you're gonna let your foot rest there, let your hand behind the back of your body, and then put the hand underneath the knee and turn away from the legs. That's nice, Carly, you got it, well done. Good. And then gently release <laughs> and back to the centre. Okay, so we now need to release the legs, give them a little bit of a shake. And sweep them over to the other side. Okay. Take the hand to the outside of the knee and it could be just that your palm is facing your way and it gives you something to press against. The other hand slightly behind so you can cultivate a lovely twist which you'll feel through the waist and the side body. Some of you might like to put your palm on the floor as a little bit of preparation for the next stage of the pose. But if you're not, if you're looking after your wrist, don't worry about this. And instead, you just think about the arm being on the outside of the leg and for you to be taking your body more into the twist so you feel a more of a stretch into the shoulders. Lovely. And then coming back to the center, releasing that foot out and it either rests on the floor somewhere towards the knee and you can kind of scoop the heel in towards the groin if you want to. Or if your hips feel open enough for this, don't force this to happen if, it, if they don't. Don't cause any discomfort to the inner knee especially. And you're, you could just hold the foot here. You don't have to, um, take the arm around the back body if you don't want to. Maybe it will be there, maybe you can reach for it. Okay, or you're just holding the foot there and turning. Or some of you might like to take your hand back to that same position and use that to pivot you round. Okay. Looking good. Okay, and gently release, come back to centre. Super stuff. Unravel the legs, bring them out in front of you, give them a little bit of a shake out. All right, make sure you're sitting up on your sit bones, untap the flesh of your bottom out behind you. Legs out straight, heels away, toes high. Uh, you can bend your knees, we're coming into Paschimottanasana, so if you need a little bend in the knees, that's fine. Inhale, take the arms up to the sky, reach up nice and tall, find lots of length in the sides of your body again. And as you exhale, lower the hands to shoulder height, 
and reach forwards. Go as far forwards as you can, fingertips reaching forwards, and then release the hands down. Maybe to hold your feet, maybe your ankles, your leggings, your shins, whatever you feel comfy. And dropping the chin towards the chest, thinking about the crown of the head moving in the direction of the toes. And you're creating a stretch along the back line of your body. But there is a balance between the lightness and the ease of the pose within the strength and the effort. All right, keep the two of them equal. Last breath here. And then as you inhale, gently unwind and come up to sit. Good job. So we couldn't have a plank pose class without doing reverse planks. So I thought I'd just slip this one in here and then we will take a rest in Shavasana. So bring the hands to the floor behind you. You can have your fingertips on the floor or your knuckles. You can also have your fingertips pointing towards your hips as is traditional. Or you can turn your hands out to the sides or even have your hands pointing back, your fingers pointing backwards. So do what is right for your wrists. And if you need to just ease out of this one or leave it out, you can come and lay down and do some rolling a hip rolls that we did at the beginning of the practice. Those of, the, of you that are coming with me, your hands are on the floor behind you. I want you to press into the tops of the palms, externally rotate the upper arm bones to open up the chest, and then it, draw the navel in, strength through the belly, lift the hips, point the toes away, keep lifting up through the front body as long and as tall as you can. Don't let the head fall back too far. Keep holding this here, breathing, squeezing the bottom, getting the hips as high as you can, even though the legs are straight. Good job. And then gently come down. Very nice. Give the wrist that shake out. And we are pretty much done. So come and have a lay down on your mat and a hug in of the knees. Take a big breath in and with your best rubbery lips, breathe out, blow your rolls, breathe. Okay, do this a couple of times, breathe in. And again. All right. Release your legs. Slide your feet away. Link your fingers. Turn your palms inside out and lengthen the arms. Move this block out of the way. Lengthen the arms alongside your ears. Spread out through the heel of the hand through the heels of the feet. Take the body super long, stretch it all out. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, relax and let the arms float down, out by your side. The palms face the ceiling, the toes roll out to the sides. And let your body sink into your mat. Make any adjustments that you need to be comfortable. Feel the back of your body dropping deeply. Legs heavy and long.
Can we relax on the inhale? Soft on the exhale. Observe the changing shape of your rib basket. And how with every exhalation you can let your shoulders relax that bit further away from your ears. Allow the back of the head to get heavier and heavier. Imagine that something weighted, not too heavy, maybe a warm, damp cloth that's scented with something, something really calming and soothing. Imagine the weight of the cloth Allowing the skin across your forehead to release. And the muscles around your eye sockets to relax. And the eyes themselves to fall away from the back of your eyelids. Feel your cheeks relaxing. And the back teeth letting go. Endeavour to keep your body as still as possible, enjoying how calm and subtle the breath has become.
let's bring your attention back into the room that you're in. But please don't make sudden movements. Maybe start by wiggling fingers and toes. Turn your head from side to side. You can stretch out any way that feels good. When you're ready, bend your knees. And if you can roll to one side, just stay there peacefully, comfortably, just for a few more moments. Support your head with, a, with your arm or, or a cushion or a yoga block. Let the breath come and go. Keep the eyes closed. And take this moment, these last few moments, as a peacefulness and calm before you let the world back in. I will leave yoga class rested and still, in touch with my breath, my heart open, thankful I'm alive. Breathing in, I am a mountain, a rock, a tree, firmly grounded in my inner essence. Breathing out, I am a flower, gentle, sweet and tender. I wish no harm on any living thing. My gift to the world is a peaceful heart and I give it now, in this moment, all that ever is and all that ever will be. everyone. So carefully and slowly bring yourself up to sit. Come into any comfortable seated position. Fingertips to the floor. Breathe in and sweep the arms up. And breathe out, bring the hands down. Close the eyes and sit for a moment and enjoy. In this sense of calm and stillness, may you take it with you so that it nourishes and feeds the rest of your day and indeed your day tomorrow yet to come. Take a breath in, open your eyes, well done, now I stay to you all. And thank you so much for coming to practice with me. Well done, everybody.